Ahoy hoy, it's Mikhaila from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video about the Retro Flag G Pi case, and I posted it kind of as a bit of a starter guide, how to do initial setup, get started with recall box, and I was running a little bit longer than I would have liked to with that video. And in that video, I had installed a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, which is much more powerful than the original Raspberry Pi Zero. So if you opted to take your original G Pi case and put a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W in it, you can actually get some Dreamcast and N64 games to play on this device with a little bit of tweaking. And there's not much you need to do. You may need to switch control schemes a little bit because there's no analog stick on this device. Or you might need to just switch to a standalone core. So I'm gonna show that to you in this video and do just a little bit of gameplay testing. So with that, let's dive in and let's get started. So let's start with Nintendo 64 and we're just going to press start on the main menu here and we're actually going to go to advanced settings and from there we're going to go to advanced emulator configuration and then Nintendo 64 and from there we're going to make sure the emulator is set to live retro Mupin 64 plus next this is the retro arc core 4 and 64 games. And there is a standalone emulator, however we can't change control schemes in that emulator and we're going to need to do that to set the joystick to the D-pad. Now there are a couple of games that require no configuration changes whatsoever. For example, Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards actually runs very well on the G-Pi case and I've been hard pressed to actually find a system that can actually emulate this game very well. The only other system that comes close is the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. So you can probably guess, I'm actually pleasantly surprised how well this game runs on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And it even looks good graphically. Now Star Fox 64 also runs decently on this device. But we need to press select and B to get into the RetroArch menu and tweak the controls so that we can actually play. So in the quick menu, we're actually going to go back to the main menu and go into settings and then input. Then from there, we're going to scroll down to port one controls. And then from there, we want to scroll down to the Y and X axis controls for the joystick and you can see here that there is nothing assigned to those buttons so we need to assign the control stick to the d-pad by default in the retro arc menu b is set to confirm and a is set to cancel so we're going to press b and then we're going to assign these controls to the d-pad and you can choose to save this controller mapping, but I actually go in every time I start up a game and set this because not every game for N64 needs this control stick layout. So I don't want to have to save something just to have to go back in and change it anyways. And now that we've done that, once we use the D-pad and start picking a direction, you'll notice that it's going to respond as it were the analog stick. And it's not perfect, but for an easy to emulate game like Star Fox 64, it is very much playable. There's going to be an audio stutter here and there, but I found myself actually enjoying playing this game on the G-Pi case. Now, we talked about what was impressive about N64 emulation on the g -Pi case. Let's talk about some games that just don't work that well. And I was actually surprised at some of the games that I had trouble with. For example, Tetris 64 does work, but there's a lot of audio lag and stuttering, and you can even tell the pieces fall to the ground much slower than they would on the original game. I'm actually not that sure what makes Tetris 64 so hard to emulate, but I ran into some trouble with this game. 
And it didn't matter whether I was using the RetroArch core or the standalone emulator core, the performance was equally abysmal with both setups. And Tetris 64 wasn't the only puzzle game that gave me a hard time on this device. Dr. Mario 64 seemed like it was gonna work and then out of nowhere I ended up with random graphical issues and the game was just unplayable. And again, it didn't matter if I was running through RetroArch or through the standalone, I still had these issues. One more game I want to test is Yoshi's Story. This was another game that I had to go in and change the controls to be able to use the joystick. But this game ran very sluggishly and was really just unplayable. So your mileage is definitely going to vary when it comes to N64 emulation on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. But the fact that this wasn't even a consideration on the original Raspberry Pi Zero any working N64 game on this GPI case should be considered a bonus more than a requirement. Now with Dreamcast, you're going to run into the same problem with there being no analog stick on this device. So you're going to have to go back into the RetroArch settings, select in B, go into settings and input. Go into port 1 controls. And for games like Crazy Taxi, you're actually going to have to map the L2 and R2 buttons to L and R on the GPI case. And then also make sure... The analog stick is mapped to the D-pad. And Dreamcast performance with those control tweaks as a whole will be slightly better than N64 performance, but you'll still get some audio dips here and there, as well as some frame rate drops. You won't really see it in Crazy Taxi 2 here because I had to disable the audio for copyright reasons, but let's try a more arcade-like game like Ikaruga. This game will function right out of the box without having to tweak any control settings but you will see some audio stutters and some frame rate drops here. Ikaruga is one of the easier Dreamcast games to emulate though, so you will get decent performance and the game is playable. And as you saw earlier in the video, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is definitely playable on this device with this Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. But again, your mileage may vary. If you're interested in this device and this Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, consider Dreamcast and N64 a bonus as opposed to a requirement for purchasing. And I want to wrap up this video by just giving my quick impressions and doing commendations and condemnations of the Retroflag GPI case as well as the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. So let's start with commendations. This device, quite frankly, looks like an original Game Boy. So if you want that throwback design and you want something that has that retro look to it, then this device is perfect. And it's a very authentic looking machine, right down to the AA battery requirement. And as I said in my last video on this GPI case, I was not impressed at all with the Raspberry Pi Zero in this device because it was just ridiculously underpowered. But once I threw the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W in here, I actually gained a newfound respect for this specific GPI case. And really, it's not the case itself, but it's actually the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W that renewed my faith in using this as a retro device. Now let's talk about condemnations and they're actually pretty significant. For starters, the screen is not OCA laminated, which means that dust can get between the screen and the front of the device. I unfortunately already have a speck of dust in my screen that I would have to take the unit apart to get rid of. And I used rechargeable batteries when I did my device testing, and I found that within two to maybe three hours, that light at the top was blinking, and those batteries were about to run out. 
So even if you are using regular AA batteries, you're going to find that you're going to run out of battery life pretty quick. Which is unfortunate because there are devices out there like the Ambernic RG351V that have OCA laminated screens and built in lithium ion rechargeable batteries that get better battery life than this unit. And one of those devices is the Retroflag GPI Case 2, which just came out a couple of months ago and already improves on this unit with a better Raspberry Pi and a better build quality, making this GPI case already obsolete, which makes it very hard for me to recommend actually going out and buying a Model 1 GPI case and a Raspberry Pi 02W unless you find both on sale or discounted. However, if you have one of these GPI cases kicking around your house already, I do recommend you get a Raspberry Pi 02W and an SD card with recall box and spice up your existing unit. Because if you ultimately bought one of these devices, this will breathe new life into it. All right, that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not seen part one of my video series on this device, I will leave a link in the video description. And if you have any questions or thoughts on this device and this Raspberry Pi, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And you can also continue the conversation in the Budget Aquaman Discord. I'll leave a link in the description to that Discord channel as well. Again, thank you so much for watching, and if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, don't stop believing, and stock up on those AA batteries.